Hello and welcome again. Uh, in our previous tutorial, we were able to look at uh, how to deploy Django, our Django project uh, on railway. And uh, in this tutorial, we're going to see how we can. There's another alternative for railway um, that is called a render. So render is a platform as a service. That, uh, let me just open it on the screen. Uh, so this is a render dashboard uh, once you have already logged in so render consists of uh, it's an easy it has an easy kind of uh, walkthrough when it comes to deploying uh, applications and uh, it is uh, it was founded in 2019 and uh, allows basically it allows hosting of static sites our websites like ours database and database instances as you can see so we have uh, various uh, database services uh, like Postgres and Redis. Uh, and also we have this blueprint, which is an infrastructure as code. Um, I'm not much familiar with this, but you can check it out. Uh, they also have a good documentation uh, that you can refer to as well. Uh, and it contains, actually it has uh, listed some of the services that, uh, all the services that it supports. Uh, yeah, so you can just have a look at it. And then uh, one of the advantages that I've found in the renders compared to some others is uh, it is easier to set up. I mean, it is uh, beginner friendly and uh, it also supports auto scaling of your web application. Um, yeah, and it also has a free tier. And actually, that's what we are going to use here. And then the only caveat that I uh, came across is uh, when it comes to services like Postgres, uh there is a limitation uh for 90 days at the time of this recording i believe they only have provided 90 days um uh, they shut it down after 90 days and i also believe there could be some limitation on the static site as well uh for the redis i haven't come across it but you can make reference to their documentation or the billing uh, page once you have uh uh, logged in and signed up. So the basic steps are signing up uh, or to render and then uh, logging in. And after you have logged in, you can come to this uh, dashboard. And uh, once you're in this dashboard, uh, you can select the services that you wish to deploy. So in this case, I'm going to click on this new. Uh, as you can see, the user interface is more or less like that of railway. Uh, with maybe slight differences so i'll just click on new and i want to run a web service so in this case our website is a web service and uh i had actually tested using my uh the uh repository uh, but in this case we have a repository which is uh called my demo website my demo website okay it seems like it cannot uh, get it so let me just uh open so uh in this web page for after creating new we have this new create new web service so you can connect to a repository and just like railway you can also add your repository uh here and give it permissions you can give uh, render permissions to auto deploy like in this case i have permissions to one of the of my repositories which is this uh, personal uh, hyphen website so since i do not have i uh, i can either grant it access but i will just add it as a as a repo here and then i click continue so uh, it will inform me that i'm deploying my service from this repository which is our Django project. And then uh, definitely we have to fill in this information, name, region, uh, the branch that we are using, uh, the Git branch to be specific, uh, root directory if there is any, and also the runtime. So in this case, I'm going to, uh, for the name, I'm just going to call it my demo website, as we are calling the, uh, this is what we call uh, the, our project or our website rather and then for the region i'm going to select singapore and for the root directory i'm just going to leave it as it is uh runtime i'm deploying it as a docker 
but if you are deploying it using the uh, usual uh, way uh, like Heroku and Railway, you can configure a proc file uh, and runtime.txt files. But in this case, I'm using Docker, so I'll stick to uh, my uh, Docker configuration. So I'll select Docker. And then this is where I was talking about. We have different tiers. And one of the things actually, even before you use a free tier, uh, you must uh, set up your billing information. Uh, they are not gonna charge you for free and uh, for free tier unless you subscribe to these other services that are not free. But for you to use a free tier, you need to uh, set up your billing information that includes your card, if any, and uh, other details. So uh, in this case, then we have these uh, advanced tab that I've just clicked. So uh, we can select, we can add our environment variables. And in this case, uh, you can, yeah, you can just create an env file, or you can also add a secret file if you have one or uh, some of uh, one of them. And this is what I'm going to do uh, shortly. So after adding my uh, environment variables, which I'm going to show later, uh, we have the Docker build context. We have of course a help check path, which is more or less similar like the one that we have in the railway. And of course, we also have the Docker build context and we also have the Docker file path. So for the Docker file path, this is where I'm going to set the uh, the other Docker, the Docker file path or the Docker file that we are using. And in this case, I'll still replicate what I'm using for uh, the Docker uh, railway. Uh, I did not rename it, so it's more or less, it's the same as the one that we used in our previous tutorial. So maybe you can rename yours to render or something else. And then we also have auto deploy. So this one detects any changes in the Git uh, repository, and then it does a, a building, it rebuilds it. And then if you want to filter some parts from the build, uh, you can add them here, or you can also choose to ignore certain parts. So having filled in all these information, uh, then you can create the web service. So one of the things I already anticipated that I'm going to encounter errors because I have not provisioned a database. Uh, this app depends on a, on a database, Postgres that is. So I need to configure a, a database. Uh, so let's just quickly look at the environment. So for the, and I think I need to change this. For the allowed hosts, uh, you need to set it to this uh, path that has been given here with, by uh, render. And I also believe if you have a custom domain, you can uh, equally add it as well. Yeah, so these are the uh, variables. They are not any different from what we added into the railway. And uh, another good thing about render, you can be able to create an environment group. You can group your environment variables across different projects. And uh, then we also have uh, disks, but these ones are used uh, because I'm on a free tier, then I cannot be able to see what is there. And then I cannot be able to access that service. Uh, we also have events, uh, but primarily the most important thing here is the log, uh, monitoring the logs. So I am going to provision a database. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard. And while this one is deploying, I can be able to uh, select new and then I'll select PostgreSQL. So for PostgreSQL, uh, maybe I can give it uh, uh, my demo db uh, for the db name i'll leave it i'll let render decide and also for the user i'll also let render decide and i can also set it to singapore and then you can also select the postgres version in this case i'll uh, select 15 and then if you have the z service called datadog uh, you can check it out if you have an api key for datadog uh, you can also add it here so yeah, so I'll just create the database and I'm still using the, notice that I'm still also using the free tier. Yeah, so it's also creating the uh, database. Oh, 
provisioning the database. And uh, you already see that we have the host name, the port, the database name, and the username. And I think these ones, I'm going to replace them into my, um, going to replace them into my the environment variables for the uh, database. And then in the database URL. Yeah, so you also have access control. You can decide uh, which IP range. And I think in this case, yeah, you can add IPs that are allowed from outside the private network of this. And then you also have a zone here in red that there are some buttons that you can restart, suspend, and also delete your database if you want. Yeah, so I'm just going to copy uh, these variables. So we have the database uh, name. So this database name, I'm gonna, let me just do it manually here. Yeah, the service has failed as I expected because of the uh, issues to do the database. So we have, yeah, there's a variable that I need to add, which is app db name. Uh, you can refer that to the, or you can refer that to the settings.py file. And then you just to be to be to demonstrate what I'm saying. Uh, let's refer this from the repository. So if you look at the env file for production, so these are the variables. So we need we need to have. I already have. The Postgres one, so I need to add this DB name, DB user, and DB password. Yeah, these are the main uh, three variables that are required. So for the DB name, I'm just going to add it here. And then I'm going to add, uh, let me just add empty variables for now. I'm going to add DB user. Because these are the ones that have been referred to in the settings.py file for our project. So we also have the DB password. Uh, I don't know if you have Postgres. Postgres. Yeah, yes. Postgres host and Postgres port. And we are also going to change that one. Yeah, so you'll notice that these logs are the same, are similar to what we have in the Docker, the Docker when you're deploying using Docker on your local machine and also they are somewhat similar to what we have in the we have in the railway uh, logs uh, during deployment. So let's give it some time to deploy. Then we are going to, to see how it looks like. So it has, uh, as you can see, we have uh, it running the migrations. Uh, so it uh, the logs are uh, run successfully. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, now there's a final procedure which I believe will take time, and that is uh, copying of the copying of the uh, what is it called? Copying of the static files. Uh, and I see as if we have an issue. It's complaining about the cloud name. Let me see. Uh, just like Relu, it should also start populating. Uh, yeah, so let me see. Uh, may they, I, I may have some misconfigured uh, Cloudina resettings or environment variables. So let me have a look at it and fix it. So I'll fix the issue with uh, Cloudina re. And uh, one way of I know is that it has started populating. It has created this folder that wasn't there in Cloudinary uh, assets, uh, the asset files, and it's copying uh, all these uh, the static files, the JavaScript, CSS, and uh, images. So as uh, just as I had mentioned in a previous tutorial, the CK editor may take some time. So we'll give it some time to complete uh, copying the static files, and then we can see if we can be able now to access our service uh, from render. 
yeah, so after some uh, moments uh, or after a while, uh, it has been able, we have been able to copy the static files as shown in these logs. And uh, the server is live as uh, shown here in the render. And uh, it is listening at uh, this port 8000. So we'll just click on this link. There's this link here. Uh, and also in the environments, don't forget to add this link to your uh, allowed host. Just to mention, don't forget to add it on your allowed host. So when I click on my app, then this is what it shows us. So we've been able to deploy our application successfully uh, on render. And you will notice the suffix or the, the URL, the link has on render.com. Uh, on, uh, on its end. Yeah, so basically it is still the same application like the one we deployed earlier. Uh, the pages are the same, everything else is the same. And if you look at uh, Cloudinary, uh, let me open the media library. Uh, you will notice that now we have the asset files. Remember there, were, there weren't many files at the moment. So these are the asset files. Uh, that are in Cloudinary, they have all been copied. And if we go to the static folder or the folder view, uh, this is how it looks like. You will notice that it is not any different from the one that we have in the, uh, the, the one that was being, the files that were being copied uh, from Railway. Yeah, so we've been able to successfully deploy these on uh, this application on Render. And uh, in the next tutorial, we will look at, there's another service called fly.io that also, you can also deploy your Django application. So although it's uh, deployment is slightly different from uh, the one that we have for uh, Railway and uh, Render, but we are going to see that in our next tutorial. Yeah, so let's, uh, uh, if you find this content to be of help, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. You can also share with other, uh, with other people who find it helpful. Uh, and uh, uh, let's uh, meet in the next one. Uh, thank you for watching.